Thank you. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, as you know, I, I love Divi theme personally. Uh, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. No? Yeah. Is this thing not working? So should I scream? Yeah. Oh, my bad. Okay, I'll, I'll try to speak louder. Um, where was I? I love Divi theme. Um, I know that um, a lot of developers probably don't like it as much just because you probably don't, you don't really need a developer after you find Divi theme, really. Um, it, has, it has a lot of options um, and it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, it may be a little bit more bloated than most themes like Genesis or uh, themes are very s simple just because it's a visual builder. So any visual builder is gonna be just a little bit more bloated than, than other themes. Um, okay, just a little bit about myself really quick. I don't like to talk about myself too much, but I think I should introduce myself. Um, my name is Sanoon Chia. It's not pronounced Sanoun, just FYI. Um, I'm the founder of Shift Web Solutions. Um, it's a web design and SEO company that I've had for about seven years now. I've been building WordPress for much longer than that. Um, I also provide WordPress tutoring, so um, you know, I, I assume that there's a lot of beginners in here. Um, I, I, I just want to make sure. Um, how many of you guys um, have already used Word, uh, Divi theme? Okay, and people that have not. Okay, good. Okay, so maybe I can convince you to start using it. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so if you, if you have any questions about um, today, um, I had a talk yesterday, you have questions about yesterday, um, or just WordPress in general, I'd love to help. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And just FYI, I know the internet here is not very good, um, but if you want to follow along on your computer or later on, go to shiftweb.co. It's um, um, a website I made temporarily just for this, uh, for WordCamp. Uh, so you can see both of my presentations, one from yesterday and, and this one uh, from today, um, shiftweb.co. It's not my main website, but it's, it's for WordCamp. So, okay, oh, also, this is my little niece. Um, I love her, she's, she's an angel. Um, I'm a little obsessed. So, just wanted to show everybody um, that she's in the world now. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and, and get started with Divi. But actually, yeah, let's, let's discuss why, um, um, what Divi theme is and why you should use it. Uh, to me, Divi, um, maybe I'm biased, but I think it's the best theme um, in the world just because I've, I've tried hundreds of themes and I'm not a developer, so I don't know a lot about what goes on on back end. I just try to find something that works fast that's user friendly, that I can create for my clients and pass on to them so they can manage their site on their own. And Divi to me is, is super user friendly to use um, and it's very powerful um, as you'll see. It's also a very popular premium theme. It's not a free theme. Um, it's a premium theme, but it's uh, totally uh, worth it to me because uh, once you buy uh, the license, you can use it for unlimited websites, not just one website. You can use it as many times as you'd like. Um, it's also a drag and drop builder. I don't use a, the drag and drop builder as much um, or at all really, uh, just because when I built re WordPress uh, sites from back in the day, I'm just used to using the, the WordPress editor um, or the Divi builder in this case. Um, but it's, it's actually pretty awesome, the, uh, the visual builder for, for Divi, and, and you'll see. Um, I'll try to show it to you. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to come up, but um, hopefully you'll see. Um, also, the, the interface is, is super user-friendly to me. I mean, I think just like WordPress, I think it's, um, there's a learning curve when you first you know, use it. You're like, okay, what do I do? But once you learn the basics, you're going to be like, oh, okay, this is really awesome. Um, the support is also really amazing just because there's a huge team behind um, uh, Divi Theme, which is created by um, Elegant Themes. Uh, they make a ton of WordPress sites. This is their biggest theme, I mean, WordPress themes. This is their biggest theme, Divi Theme, so they focus mostly on, on this. Oh, and also, like I said, it's, you can use it unlimited times once you get the license. Um, and I have links here. If you want to learn more about um, Divi, then you can uh, have buttons all over this presentation just so that when you go on uh, the site on your own time, you can learn more about each of these things. So uh, I'm going to jump right in now into the features of Divi now. So yesterday I learned my, my lesson. I learned that the internet is not very good here. So what I did was when I got home yesterday, I just created a bunch of GIFs. Hopefully um, 
uh, it, it'll give you an idea of how awesome it is. Now, if you are already using Divi theme, you probably already know this, but for the people who have not used it, this is one of my favorite things. It's not really hidden. It's pretty well known. It's uh, pre-made lay layouts for Divi. Pre-laid layouts pretty much mean um, exactly what it is. It's just layouts um, that you can use to start building your site. So instead of building from scratch, there are a ton of design and layout options that you can choose, and then you could just uh, upload it and then um, start working on your website. It's pretty awesome. So for example, let me see here. Um, so I, I opened up opened up a bunch of tabs. Um, so you guys can see a better view. But uh, how do you get to this is when you uh, start a new page, uh, this is what it looks like, right? Uh, and this is the Divi Builder. Um, and, and this is what it'll look like when you, when you start using Divi. And to load a layout, you just click this button. I'm not going to click on it just because it's probably going to start thinking um, and not go to the page. But then when you click on it, it's going to look like this. And it's gonna, you, these are all layout options that you can choose from. And it's really awesome. So for example, let's say you're a restaurant and you uh, want to use this restaurant layout. You can, OK, cool. So when you lick, click on it, you'll see all the, um, the layout pa uh, page layouts here. It's not pulling up. But each page for the about page, blog page, contact page, et cetera, um, you can upload the layout. And as soon as you upload it, it'll come to something like this and I'll load the whole layout. And you literally just save it and you will have a site that looks just like this. That's how awesome Divi is. So there's a, like 140 plus layouts that you can choose from and it makes it super convenient for you to um, start building your site so you don't have to build from scratch, you don't have to um, this is not a child theme. It's, they're just layouts, um, so they're, they're kind of similar. Um, they function differently, but they look, you know, they, they, they're similar. Um, so here's, there's a ton of different um, uh, layouts for different industries. It's pretty cool, and they're always coming up with new ones. This one right here is pretty new. I just saw that it came up here recently. Um, so it's really cool. You can just play with it, click on it, uh, upload it. And then, so for example, when I built this site right here, I just used a layout that Divi provided. Um, obviously, I made a, a ton of changes to it, but I didn't just start building from scratch. I just uploaded a layout, and there it is. It's a beautiful website, and then you make your changes. So would you go through the steps to get to that? Yeah, sure. So you would just go to edit a new page, just like you normally would, uh -huh. like this. And just make sure that you uh, choose uh, use Divi Builder, because if you don't, then it'll look like the default WordPress. Um, and it's a little purple button. And then once you click on that, it'll look just like this. And pretty easy. Just create a new page, click Divi Builder, and then you'll see Load Layout. Yeah. Any questions about loading layouts so far? Yeah, so you click Load Layout. It'll uh, pop up just like this. Okay. Yeah, it, it comes right up, um, and then you could go through all the layouts. And then when you click on it, I wish, okay, here we go. You could see the different pages that you can upload. Yeah. Do they work as child themes? So no. if you update the Divi, you won't lose the changes? Um, so uh, what's awesome is that if you make a ton of changes to uh, the layout or Divi theme, and you, um, as long as you don't mess with the code, the back end, you know, the, the theme files, your, your changes stay, stick. So it's not a child theme, but your changes won't go away. So you can make all the changes you want because it's really uh, your page um, settings and everything that you're doing for your page is all managed in, in the editor like this here, right here. So if you make changes here or anything to a uh, Divi theme that's not the actual, you won't get into the code files. I mean, there's, there's no reason to do that. So just don't do that. But other than that, no, you can make changes and you'll be fine. Yes? So you can load just one of those pages and it'll be part of your website. You don't have to have all of them. Yep, exactly. So you want a about page, a blog page, case study, contact page, et cetera. You have to upload each page individually. So you will go create a new page, call it about, right? And then click about and then put use this layout and then it's going to load. And then it's going to come and look like this. And then when you're ready for, to create your contact page, create a whole new page. Don't delete this page. Save it.
right? Create a new page and then create a contact page. And then load layout again. Go to your loading layout and click contact. Use this layout. Yes? If you don't like the layout you selected, what happens if you change the layout? You could totally change it. So here's the thing. You have to be careful when, when if you don't like the layout and you haven't done anything to the page, like put your, your information in it, you can easily change it. It will replace everything. So if you click use this layout, um, it's going to give you a little warning. Hey, it's going to replace everything that's on this page, all this stuff, right? Um, so I would find the layout that I like before I start putting in my content so your and images. So appears if you switch? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you want to load a new layout uh, just and you want to try it out, create a new page. Don't replace your current page that you're already building and, and creating. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Okay. These are good questions. Yes. Okay. So since you're loading each page separately. Yes. And since it's mostly yellow, it's the easiest thing to talk about. Don't like yellow. We want it lime green or purple. That's a good question. So we're going to get to that. It's a color palette. I'll, I'll, put, it on, I'll put it on hold. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, that's a good question, though. So um, let's, uh, I, I, I get, I'm getting lost because there's so many tabs open. Uh, yes. Okay. Back to the presentation. So the second thing is exactly what you're asking is creating a custom palette. So this is another awesome thing about Divi. So even though you see, um, you know, when you upload a layout, um, you know, I actually haven't tried this, but when you upload a layout, it's going to be, um, it's going to be yellow. Okay. But if you want to change it, you have to change it yourself. Uh, manually go in and change the yellow because it's uh, when it's uploading the layout it's just uploading all of the settings for that layout so you want to change anything you have to to change it but the color palette uh, feature here is awesome because let's say uh, any business if you have a brand um, you have a uh, a color palette. You have uh, branding standards and you have certain colors that you need to use that standard across your whole website. You don't want to use every single color in the spectrum. You just have, you know, three, four, or five, you know, colors that you want to use. So Divi makes it awesome where that, you know, if you want to um, edit something, um, like let's say you wanted to edit this uh, yellow part, where is it? Um, you know, in, in the modules um, here on, on your site, you will have to insert the hex numbers or copy and paste the hex numbers of the color manually. But what Divi does is that you can create a, a set of custom palette, which is right here, which is under Divi theme options. And right here in a general tab, you'll see a color palette. And so go ahead and set your color palette for your, your, um, your site. Um, and to do that, just go in, put in the hex number, choose the color, you know, pink. Um, and then this changes to green and then save it save so now when you go back and edit each page individually it's not going to update your actual color palette but it will be there for you so you can easily click it rather than having to copy and paste the hex numbers every time yes once you take a pre-made layout and make changes and change the colors and all that yeah you save it mm -hmm. uh, as your own layout yeah keep using that again again. yeah so yep yeah, I'm going to show you that too. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So you don't have to do it over and over again. So uh, to show you, oh yes. What happens if you convert that to to get it to both WordPress after? Um, you're just going to be a bunch of short codes, and there, I wouldn't do that. You want to just keep it at the Divi Builder. Yeah, don't don't use the default editor because it'll just show a bunch of short codes, and you'll lose your. I don't think you'll lose your stuff, but I think it'll show a bunch of short codes. I haven't tried it. Uh, but there's really no need. Why, why would there be a reason for you to want to use a default editor again? If you want to use another page builder. Um, so it gets a little tricky when you want to uh, switch over. Um, what I typically do, maybe it's easier for me to do this, but I would just build, if your site's like pretty big, a medium-sized site, or has a lot of content, um, I would just create your site on a, a separate, you know, like on a subdomain and redo it there and rather than just completely changing your theme and your plugins and everything it's a little traumatizing to your site when it you know has all this stuff and then you just change the theme you can't really you know you can't install another page builder along with Divi. oh really i haven't tried that yeah yeah it'll work it's, it, it just 
you'll just get another tab. Yeah, well, that's just too like much. Like exactly. Just, well, I, I believe you, you can, but it's just, pro- it's just what, messy. What's the point? Exactly. Yeah. So I would just start from a, screen, a, a clean install or something. It just depends on how you want to go about it. Um, but I think to me, a clean, a new install would be better, you know, um, and then switching it over. There might be a better way, but I just never had the need to do that. Well, if you build a site for a client and they don't like it. They don't like what? They, they don't like the design and they, they bring you a thing they do like. And they say it's a studio press thing or... Well, I, that wouldn't happen. You, you have to set a standard for your client. You can't just let your client, you know, boss you around. I mean, if you build, if they hire you to build a site, they need to trust you and the platform that you use. Um, um, yeah. Built at Divi and they gave you a studio press thing. Just make Divi look like the studio press. Exactly. Thing. Exactly. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I I love Genesis uh, themes. I used to use it all the time. That was the only thing that I used. I I still love it because it's so clean and simple. But the thing is, like, if you if I want to do something, it's just just so much more complicated. I have to use so much more code and CSS and, and, and for my clients too. It's like a lot of times clients are like, well, I don't want this. I want to move this around. With Divi, it is so easy to do. With Genesis, there's just a lot more coding involved. It's just not, it's clean, but um, it's not um, that flexible uh, for the everyday user. You know, maybe for developers, but you know, not for everyday users. So uh, once you set, going back to color palette, once you set it, let's say you go to your page and you want to edit something, hopefully it'll pop up. Uh, let's say, oh, not right click. Um, to, to edit uh, something in, um, in your Divi theme, you have to click on the little settings tab. Um, I assume that you already know that. But then when you go into design, that's when you'll see the color palette. When, when, when there's a color option, so for example, right here, choose custom color. If you click on that, your, your new palette comes up. So now you have access to the colors for your brand easily and you just click on what color you want to use. Um, and rather than copy and pasting the hex numbers every single time. So I love that feature about Divi. So moving on to the next thing is the right click convenience. I love this about Divi as well because um, a lot of people realize that they always, they, they may think that they always have to go into the settings, like right here, what, where I clicked. But for some features and some options, you could just right click on, on any of the modules. Um, and you will get some options here. And I'm going to discuss a lot of these options. Not, not all of them, um, but, but a lot of them. So uh, this is just quick, quick access. Um, and, and I'll go to these down here. Um, Let's see, what else? Yeah, I think actually the, the disable is the one that I do want to go, I'll go over with you. So one of the things that you have an option with the right click, I love, let's say you, you created a module that you don't need to show on mobile view or desktop view or whatever, you only want it to show it for certain devices, you can just right click, click disable, and then you'll see the three icons for yeah, so you have the phone, the tablet, and the desktop. So you click on it. If it's red, it means it's disabled. And you can all, and see when I click on all of it, 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 it grays out because it's just not going to show. So you can actually use this if you don't want to delete a module. You're like, well, I maybe need this later, but I don't want to de- delete it because it's going to be a pain in the ass to try to create it again. You could just hide it, and it, w- it won't be seen. Or you could just have it shown for your mobile, fo- uh, mobile view. So blue is active, red is inactive. So I love that. And you can do it for rows, disable. You could do it pretty much for any module, you, wherever you can right click, it's pretty cool. Any questions about this? Okay. Yes. Um, I noticed there was a save to library option. Yep, I'm gonna go through that too. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of those features from the right click are pretty cool, so I, they're included in one of the 10. Now, the module search bar is only available in the Visual Builder. So everything here that I've shown you, this is not the Visual Builder. Uh, the Visual Builder is pretty much, um, I wish I had opened up a tab. So, okay, well, the internet is working okay. That's good. I'm lucky. Okay, so the Visual Builder is just your website um, where you can visually build it um, or edit it through here. So a lot of my clients love this. I hate it just because... It's easy to, to edit text, but I'm just so used to the back end, I'm just more comfortable, but this is super easy. If you just wanna, if you're more 
you know, you, you work better visually and you want to edit something simple like, you know, images or content, you can literally just insert here whatever you want and then save it. Um, so the Visual Builder you'll see has all these little modules pop up, settings. Um, if I make a change and I want to save it, this purple um, button is the magic button where you click on it. You've got to make sure you save your, your stuff. Um, otherwise, if you leave, your changes that you made does not change. So that's like the blue button in, in the WordPress editor. Um, so if you, uh, where was I with this? Uh, oh yes, right, right clicking and searching. So let's say you like to use a visual builder. The, whoops, uh, the module search bar is only available um, in the visual builder. And I'm gonna show you, so let's say uh, you wanna edit uh, something from here. So let's click on the settings. And then um, let's say, here's the module ser search right here. So let's say you wanted to change uh, the text color or something, just start typing and it's taking a second to pop up. And then here are all your settings for text color. This is just so much easier, I like this because it's so much easier um, than going to design, click on text, and searching for everything. So I like this little tool, I think it's a little handy. I don't really use it, but I think people that use the Visual Builder, you'll find this very handy. Uh, you just right click, oops, uh, click on settings, yeah. And then uh, here's the, the tool, the search bar. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the module search bar, it's super tiny. So here's another thing that's pretty cool about Divi is the gradient backgrounds. Um, uh, the gradient backgrounds, just uh, like you see here, this is a gradient background that I use on the site. It just allows you to create um, some, you know, to be a little more creative and, and um, you know, customize the look of your, your background colors. So instead of just doing a solid background color, uh, uh, Divi offers the gradient. So let's, do, let's go look at that. Um, so if you want to change the background color of a row, for example, let's right click, well not right click, I'm sorry, is just click on the settings here for the blue one and then you'll see if I click on gradient, that's where your gradient is. So I also have an image, that's the, the, the image of Atlanta, and then I also have the gradient. So you can have a background image with the gradient. Um, you, same with the solid color, you know, you can set the opacity. But this background gradient is pretty cool. You just, you know, uh, choose your, your colors and then you just play around with it and just go to town with it and experiment. It's pretty cool. I like this feature. So that's gradients. Now let's do design options for headers. So this is another thing that I like. Um, Divi theme, I find that when it uploads layouts um, for you, if you choose a layout, it likes to have multiple H1 header tags, which is not good uh, in SEO. So you want to change this. Um, and so to do that, for example, is if you, let's see, this text, um, unlike this site, I just left all the H1 header tags because I'm not, I don't care about the SEO for this site, it's just for you guys. So I didn't change it, there's a ton of H1 um, titles here, uh, just because it was the default from, from Divi when I uploaded it. But to, if you want to change this to H1, H2, you could do that, right? Um, and then if you want, you can set the, um, the default settings for your header tags will pop up, but you can set um, custom settings for um, the, the header tags in here by going to design and scrolling down and then you'll see the header tag options. So let's say on this particular module you have H1, H2, H3, H4 um, and you can actually change it by just click on it and then you can change the, the text size, the color, um, everything. All, all kinds of stuff. And you can do this within each individual module. It may be a little overwhelming to, to have to do that a lot. Um, you, you probably don't want to do that too much. Just use your default. But the options are here that you can change it, uh, which is super cool in my opinion because before Divi theme, if you wanted to customize your H1 and H2 header tags, uh, you had to do you know custom CSS, but they make it super easy. Yes? 
module, decided that I really liked it, and wanted to copy those settings over to multiple other modules? Um, uh, so if, if you do that, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, I'm gonna na the, the most difficult way is to changing the, change the CSS, have you know, a developer install a child theme and, and change the CSS, but that's way too complicated. But what you can do is actually save the settings that you have. Um, so let's say you have a header module, uh, that you create a header module with, with this right here that you liked. Uh, what you can do is just create for this right here, let's go back. So for this module, I have text. I don't have a lot of text in here. All I have is an image and the text for this. Uh, what you can do is just delete this image or save it, uh, it depends on how you want it, and then save and add to library, which is something that we're gonna get through. It's one of my awesome features that I use all the time, but if you like something that you did within a module, you could save it. Yeah. Yes? So in the design where you can change uh, the default heading, yeah. will that automatically change within the text? Yes, yeah. You mean like this text right here? Yes. Yeah, so like, let's say I go to design and I change that H1, because see, this, this one, this text is wrapped in H1, so whatever I change, whatever change in text right here is not going to apply to that, H, that, that text and that's wrapped in header one. You have to go down here and change this, H1. And then when you make the changes here, it's going to change that H1 header. So can you have multiple headings in? Yeah, yeah. So let's say uh, you don't want multiple he header ones in, in a page, period. Just have one header one, that's just, for SEO, um, but let's say you wanted to have, uh, let's go back to this, yeah, this page, um, and then let's say you wanted to have header two, H2, test, H2, then go into design in this module, and then scroll down and go to that same area, click on the H2 tab, and then you can stylize it here. Okay, so you can Yep, all in this module. Yeah. Yep. Well, not every single one. So let's say you have two uh, header tag, two um, H2 header tags um, in this one module, just this one module, okay? Because this one module is just the title. So let's say you have H2, uh, like this H2 test, H2, and then another one H2 test, two text. Uh, whatever you set for H2 in this module is going to apply for both of the, to both of these. But if you want to have different H2 header tags, then just create a new module by clicking copy. Okay. And then editing this one and, and changing that, this one. Okay. So mm -hmm. is, is just those... Um, edits you made to code, and forgive me because I'm brand new to this. Sure, one. yeah, no problem. Um, isn't that changing the code files? No. Doing that? That's no, that's not at all. Completely okay, different. You don't touch the code files at all. So if you have a, a Divi theme update, everything that you do in here mm -hmm. does not touch the code files. Okay. So whatever, so if. No, exactly. Okay. Nope, not at all. So that's the great thing about Divi is it gives you so many options just as much as like a, de you know, a develop. You used to would have to have a developer to help you do some of this stuff. Now it's all here in the page editor. Gotcha. That's pretty cool. I have a quick yes. Question. Yes. Piggyback on that. Let's say she goes in and, and not break it, but doesn't like what she's, you know, messed too much. Yeah. Is there like a reset button where you can clear it all out and go back to the... That well, with layout? WordPress, um, uh, WordPress already has um, as default uh, that revisions for your page. Okay. So you can use that. That's a WordPress default. Yes. From some of the questions, it, it might be that people don't understand that this is all at the web page level. You're not manipulating the theme. You're not creating, theme yeah. Or a child theme. Yeah. This is your actual website that you're yeah. working Yeah, this is your editor. Level. It's just your WordPress editor. It's just, it's just, it's just your WordPress editor on steroids. And, and whatever, you know, you, the, make, the changes you make in here is <coughs> not going to touch your code files. Uh, that's what makes Divi a powerful theme because you have all these options, you know, safely. You don't have to go into the theme files or do anything like that. So, I, 
a lot of the sessions during this weekend have been on accessibility. So how does Divi and accessibility go together? That's something I'm still exploring okay. because I want to make my site accessible, but I have not explored that. And if you Google it, there, there's going to be a lot of resources, but that's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know a lot about that. Yes. Uh, I was in the last session on accessibility. Yeah. Somebody mentioned that there's a Divi accessibility plugin. She said she hasn't tested it yet, but uh, okay. I wrote it down to check into Thank you for reminding me. I also heard that she hated Divi. I don't know. Is that <laughs> true? Yeah. 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 I mean, the thing in Divi is, so, I wasn't here, but that's just what I heard. And that's, that's fine, you know. Um, the thing about Divi is that accessibility means it's, it's pretty much, from my understanding, accessibility is all on the front end. It's what you do to make it accessible, right? On the, si the sites. Nobody's going to see back here. So the fact that you have all these options, you can make your site accessible if you know how to do it, you know. It doesn't really mu have much to do with Divi, in my opinion, but I, I could be wrong. I don't I don't know a lot about accessibility, so. Can you preview that page? I'm sorry? Can we preview that page that we're looking at? Uh, yeah, it's this page right here okay. that I've been going through. The plugin WP Accessibility, mm -hmm. if you added it to this site, would solve that problem? I don't know. It just it, de it depends. It yeah, it, w it just depends on what, what the accessibility issues are that you need to fix. I mean, you might not even need the plugin. If there's something that you need to do, you could find a, a solution to, to fix whatever you need to fix. Um, but I don't know a lot about accessibility, so I'm not sure. But this right here, um, I'm not saving any of the changes I'm doing that I'm showing you, is actually this page right here that I created that you have access to at any time. So you can go back to see what I talked about. Another awesome thing about uh, Divi, it's a little unnecessary, but you know, people, people need it, I guess. Um, so they have this option here. And the reason why I say it's uh, unnecessary is because Divi already comes packed with 800 fonts. It's all the Google fonts. But some people are like, well, I still have a font that's so special that I want to upload. Um, well, I try to understand, you know, because it's, it matches your brand and you need to upload uh, a font, which is super cool because uh, Divi makes it very easy to do. All you, if you want to change the font for something, all you got to do is, I, I really like to right click, and I, even though I don't need to, uh, click on the settings. And then when you go into the settings and into the design options, you, wherever there is a font option right here, like text font, you can upload a font. It's pretty cool. So um, if you're like a designer and you build sites for clients, clients are going to go crazy about with this stuff. So just tell them to not do stuff like that because then you're going to have a million fonts. <laughs> yes? How many of these features are in the last upgrade? Um, a uh, couple, the, the, you know, I don't remember. They're always coming up with, so that's a good question. Divi's always being updated regularly. Um, it's always coming out with new features. So I can't keep up, uh, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I guess I never tried that, so I wouldn't know, because I always copied and pasted. Yeah. I never had to, I mean, the only numbers I know is like black, red, white, you know, blue, like the basic colors. I never, I never type it in, so I never noticed that. But now you could just type it in. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, Divi is always being updated, so uh, that's another thing is that, is that it's, it's a very strong uh, theme. It's always being, it's taken care of. So um, if there's like a bug or something happens, it'll be updated. But like I said, when you update the theme, it's not going to mess with the settings that you made in the page editor. So that's important. Yes? Um, you mentioned the fonts that it comes with. I'm assuming that's in the theme options. Yeah. Um, is that the one from Google Fonts? Yeah, it's all Google Fonts. So when a font is loaded, is it going to load all the font weights, or can you select so you're not pulling in all unnecessary resources? Can you um, select the font weights that you want to load in? Like the font like weights, you, do, you said? Like Font, yeah. And that way you could, if you can select just the font weights you would need. Yeah, so, so all, all these fonts are available. Um, I'm not really sure where they're hosted, these fonts, but they're all available. So if I literally just click, I want to change it to Ac Acme, it, I don't have to upload anything. It just changes it to Acme. Is that, does that answer your question? Well, I, I just ask, but I always have a problem with is in the theme options, that's what I want. It's going to load. 100, 200, all the way to 900, and may not be using all those. So often I'll, I'll insert it into a, a header plugin, 
of Go Grab Google Fonts. I see. So when you upload a font, it's just going to upload that file. Uh, if, if I think I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it's if it if it'll take uh, zip zip files. Uh, but if you just upload like a TIFF file or whatever the font file is, it'll just upload that one font. Now, um, if you upload a font file, then it's got cross browser mm -hmm. compatibility. What will it do if that font file doesn't work on like the Internet Explorer? Um, well, first of all, you shouldn't be using Internet Explorer. <laughs> I know you hear that a lot, but I'm just like, when I hear that, I'm just like, don't. It's like, even, even Microsoft told you not to use it. They're like, stop using it. Why are you guys using this? I mean, the company's telling you not to use it. So I can't tell you. I don't know. If something doesn't work on Internet Explorer, I'm like, I don't care. Because that's your fault for using that browser. So I, I just get to the point where I don't care anymore. I'll say sorry. I don't offer support well, for IE. Font, you know, gets loaded from Google, and, and that's one file. The weight gets rendered by the browser based on what you told the browser. To yeah, it's all like. So it's not like there's, you know, like one font and then eight different variations. But there's not eight different files. There's one font, and then the browser, depending on which browser you're using, will will render that. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I didn't really understand your question. So if you if you want to use this one of the fonts here from 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 Google, just click on it, and then if you want to change the weight, you have the options here to change. Let's see, uh, text uh, text font weight. Yeah, if it's available, because sometimes I see that it'll have I could change the weight by like 100, 200, 300. You know, yes. A lot of the question is when you're using fonts, you're downloading potentially hundreds of files or a combination of hundreds of files. You still absorb the bandwidth to bring those fonts down. Is there a way in Divi to limit the file size so you are not throwing so many bits around the internet? And slowing down your site load. So Google fonts aren't they posted by Google? Yeah, they're not loaded on that. To yeah, they're they're not lo they're, you're not uploading hundreds of files when you upload a font. Um, if if you're choosing one of the the fonts here, it's 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 I believe it's being hosted by Google. You know, I it's, you're not uploading yeah, hundreds of files. You've got to then access that file that's hosted by Google and load it. I, I don't think it's uploading hundreds of files. Yes? I, I just want some clarity on this. Are people saying that they click in the drop down just because they have access to it in the editor? Yeah. To all those? Yeah. That they don't, when somebody goes to the website, no, it's just the one font that this is good access to it in the editor. Yeah. That's not just being loaded for the end user. Yeah, this, all of this is not in like your WordPress website, if that's what you're asking. All these hundreds of fonts. If you want to choose one, I think what they're asking, like it used to be, that if you picked a specialty font, mm -hmm. then they had to, the, the website had to load it and you had to take it with your website, so to speak. Now it looks like the specialty fonts is almost a non-issue because Google's recognizing all this because now design is kind of pushing the internet, so Google is already trying to take down that, you know, it's slowing down because... Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, I will double check this, but I'm pretty sure that this is not hosted within your website. So if you choose this, Divi has connected Google Fonts, you know, with... It pulls from... Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because it's not going to slow your site down. I mean, it's just, it's just pulling... Yeah. Yeah, it's saying, hey... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, I can't remember that font software that nobody uses anymore that I used to use a long time ago where you could say, hey, uh, I have a, a font that I want to use, a special font. I need to implement it uh, with my website. But I would, wait, what is it? Launch 
No, it was like this, uh, I don't know what it was. It was where I could connect. Um, the, the font would actually be hosted with this other site, not with your WordPress. Now, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's, to answer your question, no, the, you don't have hundreds of fi font files in your, in your site. Yes? Yes. Yeah. The more fonts load it, the more of a heavier resource that even though mm -hmm. it's hosted from Google, it's still gotta call each one of those fonts yeah. individually as another resource. You have to set a standard with your clients and say don't do that. That's what I do. I saw it. don't go in there. <laughs> yes. Especially if I'm hosting it, don't do that. Yes. Yeah. You sure can. Yep. You, ha you have the option to do that. As a developer, stop them being able to do fonts and yeah. do anything other than just very basic stuff so you can control that. Yeah, maybe I should have. Yeah, I should have should have added something here. I actually wanted to do a bonus one, but I didn't have time because I had to make all these GIFs. But I'm glad it's working because I, I, I don't really we don't really need these GIFs. Um, so the next thing I want to move on to is collapse and rename. Um, so this is pretty cool. So when you build a site using Divi, the editor back here, it can get really long and confusing. So one of the things that you can do is collapse it by just right-clicking. And this was one of the right-click things, uh, one of the 10, um, and click collapse. And then you can open it back up. And then if you want to rename it, we could just say uh, click rename and do, I'll just call it hero. Click save, and then when you collapse it, oops, it's, it's called hero. And here's another thing that I really love, um, that I don't really use the collapse that often because I hate, because I do need to access a lot of this stuff. Um, it's great for modules that you don't use a lot and you could just collapse it. Um, what I do use a lot is renaming the actual modules here. You see it says text, text button. Well, you just click on settings and Go to the bottom and change the admin label. Nobody's going to see this but you. Let's call it uh, uh, section title. Save. And it's easier to find. And when you have a lot of these little gray things everywhere, it's like, OK, where, where do I go? So as you can see for this page, because I was editing it so much um, right here that I had named it. And nobody's going to see this, but it's just for me, pre-made layouts, create custom color palette, et cetera, right? I didn't rename this module or this module. I just renamed this cause, so I know what, what it is. So that's another thing that I love. Yes? So are you using like a person module? Because I do a lot of bio pages. Yes, it works so well. So I have. The same too, if someone leaves the company, you just rearrange them. Exactly. Yeah, so you know, I built a site for a client recently uh, that had a ton of people in their team, and it was just all all you saw before you know I created you know named the the, um, the the modules. You would just see text, 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 blur, blur, blur. You know, it was just so many, and then so all you had to do is just change it, change the title, and then and then you could see, and then you can easily just click X to delete it. So if I click X to delete it, or you could just do undo, and it just comes right back. Yes. Um, nope, it's right there, right here. You see the column option? Click on that. These are all your options okay. by fours. Can you add your own custom ones, or are these the ones you choose from? This is the one you had to choose from. Yeah, so if I want to change it to that. With the child thing, you could go in and add some more. Yeah, else. yeah, but I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to go through all that. Can, but yes, you, yes, you can, but for, for this purposes, it's, for, it's really good for beginners, and I'm not going to go into anything advanced. I mean, you literally can do anything you want with your website. I mean, if you want to add custom, but... Um, most of the times, what I love about Divi is that you don't even need to to do that because a lot of times the, the options that is already in there is just so much that you don't really need to do much. Yes. One of the things that I found that helped was the specialty sections that they added somewhat recently. Yeah. That oh yeah, the specialty sections. Yeah, you click on that, you can do things. Yeah, this is it's a little more advanced. You have to play with it. It's pretty pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, that is number nine. You guys ask good questions because you're like psychic. Okay, so say to library, this is what I use a lot, most of the times. So let's say um, you create, so what I did was, for example, if you look at this page, I have green, purple, gray, green, purple, gray. So what I did was um, I would just clone it. So let's say uh, the create, create custom palette. Uh, well, this is not the save, but I'm going to show you clone too because uh, it's kind of similar. Oh, well, not really, but I use it a lot. Um, so if, if I like this, this create custom palette, um, I don't remember what color background that was. Custom palette uh, was the second one. It was purple. And I need another purple background. I could just click clone. But click, click clone for the whole section, not uh, the, the modules within that row. The whole section, and you clone it, and it pops on right here. And then I could just change the text and all that. And then I can move it around because I don't want it there and or delete it. Now, that's a good option within pages if you want to use the same modules. But let's say you want to use a module for a separate, uh, another page. You don't want you can't copy it. You know, you can't clone it just like we did here. So you could pretty much save anything to the library from individual modules like here by I always want to right click by clicking this uh, the settings option right here, and then you have save to add li uh, save and add to library. So this section right here, let's say I wanted to save um, the pre-made layouts. One of the one of the first things that we discussed, um, and, and I want to put this whole row pre-made layouts, this whole green row onto another page. Make sure that you choose the whole row, which is the blue part right here. Click the settings, and then save it and add to library. I'll call it pre-made layouts section. Save it. You don't really see it do anything. You saved it, right? But let's say you're in your other page, a completely separate page. Okay, let's pretend I did all that. I don't want to click too much. And then you, you go to the section that you want to put that uh, row in. Just click Add from Library. And when you click on that, there it is, everything that you saved. So let's say you wanted to just save, um, uh, you, cr you created a header that you liked from the other question that you had earlier. Um, let's say this is the header that I like. Just, just this right here. I don't want to save this whole green module or you know that whole row. I just want just, just this right here. This, just this text. I styled it to the way I liked it. Then you would just save this part because that's where it is. And click the settings there. And then click Save to Add to Library. And then I'm going to call it header um, 1 because uh, so it was a header 1. You can name it whatever you want. Save it. No, but I'm going to discuss that in a little bit. Yeah. So, no, you don't have to make it global. That's different. So, let's say you wanted to add that. Let's say you click Add from Library. It's not going to show up because where I clicked Add from Library is only going to pull like the sections, the rows right here, right? These sections. So, if you want to add that header, you'll have to have a module like this open and just click Insert Module and click Add from Library. And there's that header. So, sometimes that can be confusing. Yeah. Or, for example, if I want to save this row, just this row, click Save That. And, and I'm just going to save it and call it Row Example. Save it. If I click here, Add from Library, it's not going to show because that's not a section. If I click Enter Module, it's not going to show because it's not uh, a module. I mean, I, I call everything module, so I know that's a little confusing. But that's, this, that's not actually a module, what I just saved you have to click Add Row. Because I saved the green, the green part, I saved it to the library, that's the row. And then click from Add from Library, Row Example. Does that make sense? So I love this feature because it, um, it really um, makes it super easy. So I'm running out of time, so, but I'm going to discuss the global module really quick. Let's say um, you created a footer for your, your site, let's say I have this footer down here and I like it and I want it for every single page. If I go to edit page, it's this, well, do you see how many times I saved it? I'm a little obsessive, clicking save. 
Yeah. Everybody should be. Yeah. Um, this right here is the footer. I can make this global, but if I want to save it, click save, uh, save and add to library, and I'm going to call it footer, and I'm going to make this a global item. So when I do that, it'll change the color. It'll change the color. So now when I go to a new page and I add, add from library, and I'll add the footer, you'll see it's green. It's global now. So what this means is that a footer, if it's global, if you make a change in this, any, anything in this global footer right here, you make a change, it's going to change on every single page that the, the global footer is in. It's pretty awesome. So you save time, uh, then you don't have to, you know, if you have this footer in multiple pages, if you don't make it global, then you're going to have to change it for every single page. You have to go in and edit the page, which is annoying. So, and that was, yes, number nine. Okay, number 10. Uh, mobile tablet options, uh, really quickly, I love this feature. So let's say you have a header, like for example, on the top of this page, uh, this header right here was way too big on mobile view, so you can customize the actual uh, view of this. Before we discussed disabling it, but let's say you just wanted to make sure that the text is smaller so it reads better. So to do that, let's go to that module, go to section title, and then uh, click the design tab. That's where you're going to change the, um, you know, the, the settings of that font or that text. And if you go down, um, you will see right here the heading size. Um, if you... Um, uh, you'll see it says desktop, tablet, and smartphone. This wasn't here before, but I clicked on the phone. If you click on the phone, everywhere you can customize the view for tablet and uh, mobile view. You'll have see this little icon. You click on it, it gives you the option. So let's say um, for the heading size, you see for desktop, it's at 55. This is 55 uh, points. If you uh, go to tablet, it's a little bit smaller. Your smartphone is 32. So you can customize what it looks like for each device which I love this feature, it's pretty cool. Yes? The, the form? Yeah. Yes. Wherever you see uh, this little icon, that's where you can do it. So for photos, um, um, yeah, it's mainly for text. What I, when I see these, um, these, these icons, it's mainly for text. For photos, you're going to have to customize it um, by CSS or, or something else. Well, if, you put, if you take the image and put an image, yeah. in, it'll it's, it's responsive it's already. So that's another thing. Uh, Divi is already, in the, by default, mobile friendly. So whatever layout you put, whatever you do, it's going gonna, it's gonna to scale. Yeah. So that's why you don't really need to do that for photos, because it just scales. Yes? One of the things that I've done is that you may um, make this module viewable on desktop, and, but hide it on mobile. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So I'll do that too. Yep. And to do that really quickly, I know that's not in there, uh, unless somebody else has a question, is for example, you could just change this and put, um, uh, yeah, disable. And let's disable it for desktop. And then what I would do is probably call this like a mobile module or something so you can know. And then just clone it and then and then do this, disable, and make sure that this is only for mobile view. And then you can customize it however you want. I do want to say one thing, and this is a quirk that I, I mean, a caveat to this that I, that I don't like that already talks to support about. Yeah. Desktop needs desktop and tablet for, uh, landscape. Tablet is tablet portrait, and phone is phone landscape or portrait. And I'm talking to them about getting each one. Oh, wow, that would be. So just yeah. so you know, when it says tablet, it only means portrait, and desktop will be desktop. And if you want it, then you have to go in and do a little thing playing around with it. Yeah, so what I do is when I do tweaking um, to optimize for my phone, I have my phone next to me, and I make the changes and then refresh and see if it works. That's all, that's all you got to do. Just play around with it. Yeah. One thing to be aware of when you hide the modules they're still rendering 
Mm -hmm. So the problem True. I ran into a couple of cases, let's say for example, I had modified for a nonprofit their checkout. Yeah. Problem was I had a desktop checkout and a mobile optimized checkout. Yeah. They didn't work because yeah. the JavaScript was duplicated. Exactly. So just be aware that you're, it, when you disable it, it's still rendering. Exactly. It's just, using it's just none to hide it. Exactly. It's just yeah. doing display none. It's so just hiding. Careful. If you have a module that doesn't yeah. really work, if you've got it in there twice, it may be. Yeah, it. just so. double check that. Yeah. And if you really don't need the module, just delete it. Don't just hide it. Just delete it. But yeah, that's true. Does it offer a free uh, trial? So no, right no, because what? Yeah, yeah, pretty so much. Do yeah. You um, it depends on how many sites you want to build. If you want to build a ton of sites, then and the reason why I like the lifetime, I say yes, just because um, if you don't get the lifetime, it's eighty nine per year. You have to pay every year for as long as you have your website. So if you build a lot of websites, yes, definitely. And if you uh, have, um, if you plan on using a long term, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, does anybody else have any questions? Okay, good. I'm glad. Sure. Yeah, yeah. I just inherited a client mm -hmm. whose last designer built the site on Divi. Yeah. What's going to happen? I mean, what's my access there? I don't Um I mean, I can get into the site. And do you don't need access. If that site already has access, then you're good. You can make changes to that site. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, I'm going to answer your question. Thank you.